All right, Shalom, Shalom Rastafari again, and we're going to continue with this uh, Torah portion, this reading and feeding, and here we're using the Wikipedia, right, to redeem the time, and the days are very evil, and this documentation is out there, you can find it, so, you know, one can access this information, even though you know that we published this also within our study books, the Torah portion. So here we're in the 40th Torah portion, the weekly Torah portion, our Orita Minbab, which is called Balak, all right, Balak. And now we're going to scroll and go fast forward, right, to, um, first of all, let's just review. Balaam, in the prophetic sentence of Rastafari revelation, Balaam would be the so-called modern, so-called um, church, especially the black church, which has apostated itself, is in a state of apostasy, apostasy, has fallen away from its true calling. And we know that the true calling of the church is the truth of the black Messiah, the Moshiach, Yeshua, has gone away from that over the last 40 years. So when we look at the condition of so-called black America, the church has a, a awful and a crushing responsibility, especially the black church. But the preachers and the pastors have fallen to the sin of Balaam as well as the doctrine of Balaam. Now, we know this by revelation. When we look in the revelation, the book of Revelation, through Rastafari revelation. So once we over, once you over that particular connection, when you can understand and comprehend exactly um, the correspondence of that connection, the prophetic word. All right. Now, instead of cursing the people, what did Balaam do? He blessed the people. All right. He blessed the people. Now you have to recognize the black church in America, especially the the authorized or the accepted church or the church that basically the white man, the European, the foreign national has set up for black people. Especially when we talk about the Southern Baptists and Martin Luther for King, so forth and so on. This is what has brought us to the present state that we are in today and the pre present prophetic state in the valley of the dry bones an excellent book by rudolph windsor so here and once again this is baal historical baal right and so worshiping um yeshua adonenu adonai yeshua the woolly-haired ethiopian messiah they're worshiping the false christ right the false christ the whitewashed christ you know, it was in all the other Christ, the anti-Christ. Now, in the Bible, there's a bar, Jesus, someone named Bar Jesus. You can look that up. It's in the Bible. Now, that's very kind of interesting because he was a sorcerer. He was a sorcerer. Now, when you go from the etymology of Baal, Baal, and Bar, there's a very interesting connection into a position of the L and the R. So it could be Bar or Baal, Baal or Bar which is very bar some say means son of but bow oh, it's, a, it's it's dealing with the ancient you know the ancient so called myth, mythology the ancient part of humanity that people think that they're smarter than now so they reject this ancient knowledge they think the ancient people were stupid you understand know but the key people in society study these things. We kind of showed it a little bit with the most recent clip about SGI and the, and the, the, the Ashens, you know, the Habashians and how to use the Ethiopic fear. And, you know, why do they spend millions of dollars looking into outer space? Billions, actually. And they take away programs from people on the earth. What, 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 what do they know? Or what have they suppressed, all right? But let's continue with the sin of Baal Peor, Baal Peor. Now it says that when the Israelites, the Beit Israel stayed at Shittim. Now Shittim is very important. Remember the names are very important. The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is an excellent resource to, to utilize. The people, they went whoring with the Moabite woman and worshipped their God, who was Baal Peor, or the so-called Lord of the Opening. The Lord of the Opening. Now, I want you to think about that carefully before we're going with this. Now, that enraged the true God, the true God of the Beit Israel, the God of the Hebrews. So, Balaam could not curse. You understand? In other words, um, Christianity 
You know what I'm saying? In its essence, in its true essence, do not, this, cannot curse, even in this whitewash, black people. But now when you have black people, you know what I'm saying, regurgitating these same lies, you know what I'm saying, to the lost sheep is the same thing that happened here at the sin of Baal Peor. Now, Moabite connection is interesting. One of the Hebrew Israelites has a, has a vid out there, and he pointed out brandy and, um, um, Brandy and and Jennifer Hudson. He said these are Moabites. Now we know about the Moors, the Moorish. And what's interesting is, you can see that this Baal here is wearing this kind of similar to Egypt, but you can also see that it's, it's similar to the Phrygian cap as well. All right. Now we also understand that when we're dealing with Moab, there is a a a a something good possibility in that. Now we know the lineage of the Moshiach is through the Moabite, right, who chose the God of Israel. So she came out from that, that we're speaking about Ruth, and we published a translation of Ruth. Check it out at our website if you're interested in some of that backstory and the whole Ethiopic, ancient Egypt connection there. But let's go on with this. So the people went a-whoring. Now, Balaam could not curse the Beit Israel, so he did the next best. He, he did the next best thing because Balak, the king of Moab, had hired Balaam to curse the Beit Israel because he was afraid. He saw that they they was getting victory. They were getting too strong. It's like over the past forty years, when we look at black people's story in America. You know, then we can see where they were coming to that black power level in the 60s. They were getting too strong. So they had to be cursed. And where did they go? They went to their Balaam. This is why the Bible cautions us of the sin of Balaam. What was the sin of Balaam? And the doctrine of Balaam. What did Balaam teach or what did Balaam advise to Balak? He said, you cannot curse this people, the Beit Israel. You know, it was like black people couldn't be cursed, but if you could demoralize them, have them curse themselves, take the Bible out of the class, you know, and take the Bible out of schools, take that authority, you know, and divide and conquer them, women's rights, and get the black men and women to break down from the black power, you know, was where they were coming together again, and now you had the woman against the men and the men against the woman, this divide and conquer thing that we're still wrestling with, all these kind of social issues that are all part of the programming, you know, and part of the programming. So what happened here was that the, the people, really the men, the Israelite men, because he wanted to curse mainly the men because the men were gaining victories. The black man was getting too strong, so we see the rise of co-intelpro. You know what I'm saying? We see the rise of pseudo-feminism. You know what I'm saying? In the black community where the black woman now is reacting to the black man as though the white woman who reacts to the white man. You see, there's a difference. The white man, the European man, kept his woman, you understand, in a substandard condition for hundreds of years. If you look at European history, a lot of European women were fighting for that so-called equality. Even over here in America, it was only the rich land-owning owning, um, white male gentry that could vote or had a real say. You know, and when you look at when the blacks were going for the vote back in the 1860s and everything like that, that some of the white women who supported the black man's right to vote, you know, saying when that became a reality, many of the very important European women um, suffragettes, they actually spoke out, say, ain't this something the Negro, the nigger, is going to get the vote before the white woman do. So there's always a dichotomy there you need to understand. But here in this particular portion, the people went a whoring, the men, with the Moabite woman and worshiped their god, Baal Peor. Is this god still being worshiped today? And if it is, it's enraging Jah. Now, Jah had told Moses to impale the ringleaders, and Moses directed the Israel, Israelite officials, the Beit Israelite officials, to slay those who had attached themselves to Baal Peor. Could this be an explanation for the, 
for the high rise and the rate on black on black murder, killing, and violence in the black community. And one of the reasons why it seems as though the black so called church which has been divided into many different pieces, like 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 shadowing shadow, shadowing a piece of crystal. You have more black. You have more churches, like in Brooklyn. You're over saying more churches in the black neighborhood than you do in the European or any other neighborhood. You know, religious so-called centers, and yet the immorality rate. Is, is 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 several times higher than even the people who are worshiping so called false gods. You understand? So so something must be going on, right? And something is going on. This Torah portion really helps us to understand what's going on. So it says right here that John had told Moses to impale or to 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 you could say hang, you understand, really impale to put them on a wooden stake. They basically dead them. Dead these ones, you understand, who are worshiping false gods. And Moses had directed the Beta Israel officers and officials to slay those who had attached themselves to Baal Peor. You understand? So violence. Let's understand this element of violence, the black on black violence within the within the black communities around I mean look at Chicago. We was hearing about Chicago and the death rate, the murder rate out there. You also know, over here in New York there's been a whole bunch of these shootings and even a few uh, killings recently. You understand know, drive by some innocent child, woman or you know, girl or boy or being just killed for Seemingly no reason, because ones don't want to tell the lost sheep the truth of who they are in John's sight and in the word. And who is responsible? Who is the authority figure? It is the black churches, because they are the ones that say before God, we are here to represent you in spirit and in truth. There's a lot of spiritualism going on in these churches, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of truth. They seem to be sidestepping. This is why when we talk about the sin of um, Balaam, and the, uh, the sin of Balaam and the doctrine of Balaam, it's one thing to be oppressed or in bondage in a system. It's the next thing to justify that evil system and to praise that evil system which is evil according to God's word, the very word of God. They say separation between church and state, so it should be no problem for true black preachers and pastors and others, as, as even white folks in their forms of Christianity will criticize the government, you understand, and it would be no, um, no violation of their consciousness or conscience and, and not illegal for them to do so. You understand? But it says when one of the Israelites publicly brought a Medeanite woman to his companions, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, took a spear, followed the Israelite into the chamber, and stabbed the Israelite and the woman through the belly, according to Numbers chapter 25, verses 6 to 8. Now it says right here, then the plague. Now you notice this right here. There was a plague. Is AIDS a plague? We saw a, a recent frontline um, documentary special. It was talking about the end, very interesting, the end of, 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 of AIDS, or the, or, or the end game. It was called end game. The end of AIDS, uh, or AIDS in black America, something to that effect. The end game. Isn't this interesting? Population reduction, eugenics, but look, the plague. It said in the latter days there would be plagues and pestilences. Is AIDS, HIV, a plague among the lost sheep? But and now this is very interesting. And you understand this is this is very very interesting. But let's get get forward to this stripper pole thing. So as we were saying in the last part of it, in the last portion, that what you might call, you understand what you might call um, the stripper pole. In the ancient time, was known as was known as the Asherah or the Asherah, the Asherah pole. You can see it in some very interesting settings right here. This is the religious church church form of it in in um, the Vatican, the Asherah pole to church steeples, which is like a type of obelisk. Really, it's a type of phallus.